last session of the day. Are we learning? Are we having a good time? Everything good? Good track? Good deal. Well, we're going to keep it going. We've all heard the phrase, content is king. We hear it all the time. But I like to say something different. I like to say, content is everything, and everything is content. If you think about that, it's up to us to establish ourselves as an authority in our field and to entertain and educate your readers with engaging content. Billy Hillier joins us from Las Vegas. Billy is a blogging addict, self-proclaimed blogging addict. She has over 15 years of traditional and internet marketing experience. Feeling that there was a need to help women entrepreneurs grow their online presence through a thorough understanding of what it takes to be successful, she recently founded, ready for this, Mommy Blogger You. And I hate the term, sorry. <laughs> but brands love it. I think it's cool. I think it's great. So Billy's talk today, Anatomy of a Blog Post, How to Make Readers and Search Engines Love Your Content. Everybody, welcome Billy Hillier. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. A little bit about me. I'm not on the technical side. I used to do a little techie stuff. I just, I dream that I'm that person, but I'm really not. My brain is the other side where I'm more the marketing, the idea person. Um, I help others find their voice, help them brand it. I help them with the marketing, and then I show them how to make money. Like you said, almost 20 years in corporate, I didn't update that. <laughs> and the corporate, nonprofit, small business, and personal consulting. Uh, I'm an evil blog owner who will abuse my personal sites. If you go to one one day, it'll look one way, and the next day it'll look something different, and I'll have a pretty picture one day, and the next day it's black and white. I beat my sites up to test them. I'm seeing if, it, you know, if the design matters for my bounce rate, how it affects everything. So my sites may be pretty one day, and they're junk the next. That's just who I am. Um, and it helps people still talk to me, because that way I don't have to screw up somebody else's site to test something. So those clients keep coming back. One thing about me is I believe 100% that personal relationships in blogging is a key to your success. So look around everybody here today. You should take a, one or two cards home with you of people that you really connected with. Stay in touch with them. Get your own little tribe, even though I hate that word too. Get your tribe because together you can make each other successful. A uh, little financial disclosure, I always like to do that. I may or may not reference income generating websites that I may or may not be an affiliate with. Uh, it's all about the money, right? Uh, I do get paid as a conference pa uh, planner and I am a paid consultant and speaker. Now, who you might think I am and I'm not, earlier this week, and this is a little TMI for you, I had a rare migraine that simulates a stroke. When you're 42 years old and you think you're having a stroke, it will scare the hell out of you. I still have some residual effects, so I might stumble, I might slur my words, or I just might stop mid-sentence and stare at you. I'm sorry. I can't control it. It's just, it's just what's happening right now. So I'm not the town goof and I'm not the party girl. That'll be later tonight at the, um, what's the name of that place? There, there you go. That's what we can call me that. All right. So content. Content is king. Content is key. Whatever you've heard, it's true. You can have the most beautiful website, but if you don't have content, you have nothing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. No matter what niche you're in, whether you're a technical writer talking about only things you understand, whether it's medical, graphic design, or how to make a pie. If you're not writing good content, nobody wants to read it. Nobody's going to stay on your website. Um, the longer they stay on your website, that's better, especially for search engines. They like that. They track all of that for you. And those visitors are going to return to your website because they like your voice. They like the way you storytell. And even if it's a dry subject, if you can spin it into a great story, they're going to like that and they're going to keep returning back to your site. With good content, become, uh, ooh, did you see that? There's one. Comes more opportunities, which may mean more income, if that is your goal. 
Now, I didn't poll the audience because you guys have been polled on that, but let me ask that now. Who here is a lifestyle blogger? You just blog for the joy of it? Okay. Who here blogs for your company or small business? Wow. Okay, that's a lot. Who here is um, not really blogging yet? You're just here to learn. Good for you. Good for you. There is money in blogging. There is a lot of money to be made in blogging. So, in my humble opinion, a blog post is the most important part of your blog. It can be beautiful, again, beautiful design, but if the content's not there, it doesn't matter. Most posts are missing key elements of a, con of a blog article. And this is subjective. This is what I have seen through lots of testing and research, reading other articles, white papers, whatever. So I've compiled everything. This is just my opinion. Um, most of these problems are easy to fix, and it's going to make your content more powerful, which makes your blog more powerful. Now, I used to have a sound bit. I used to do this little dance. If you were in the child of the 90s, there was a song like, this is how we do it. I took it out. <laughs> I took it out. <laughs> so this is how I do it. Keyword research. Who here does not know what keyword research is? Do not be shy. Okay. There is a tool that I like to use called Google Keyword Research Tool. And let's say I'm writing an apple pie recipe, and I use analogies of food in all of my presentations because it's something everyone can relate to and I like to eat. Um, so if I'm using my keyword as apple pie, that's probably pretty competitive. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Google t um, keyword tool and I'll type in apple pie. And maybe I'll think of some other terms like best apple pie recipe, easy apple pie recipe. And I'll just put all those words in to see what it's going to spit out to me to give me ideas what keywords I might want to target for my blog post. That's the first thing I do before I start writing. I just want to have an idea of those keywords to blend in casually to my article where my reader isn't dis you know, really disrupted by that. So learn how to do keyword research. I'm a big person that thinks organic traffic is really the only traffic because I'm making money right now on all my websites because they rank in the search engines. It's passive income. It's wonderful. And it's through SEO. Um, try to use one keyword phrase and similar throughout your post. So you can say this is the easiest apple pie. This is the apple pie that my grandma used to make. Just blend in variations. Make sure that you know, you've got them throughout your post so they're all not clumped together. And then if you only write about apple pies, don't use the same terms over and over and over in each article. Try to mix them up a little bit. And then later we're going to talk about internal linking and how you can actually use articles to get them all to come up in the search engines together. One thing, um, and there's some plugins that will help you with this, but know your character links earlier if you missed this um, presentation on WordPress SEO. There are plugins that will help you with this information. The one in red is the smallest. So you need to know your character links. Your title tag is this title. That's the snippet that people see when they search apple pie. It needs to be at least 64 characters or less. Your meta description needs to be 156 or less. This is for all the search engines to make all of them happy. Um, not all of them use the information the same way, so I just sort of do everything the same, throw it up against the wall, and see what sticks to which search engine. And then for your permalink or your URL, you want it to be 65-ish or less. And again, I use WordPress SEO by Yoast, so to me that's the best one, that's my favorite. If I were young and single and lived in Holland, I would be like all over him because I think he's great. <laughs> he's the bomb. Uh, so anyway. So being number one is nothing. And a lot of people get confused with they want to be number one. But you're number one. So what? Because if you're not 
engaging people, nobody's going to click on that. So when you type in apple pie and you scan that first page, you're looking to see which one is of most interest to you. And you're doing that by looking at the title and the description. You might be number one, but if your title and description is crap, nobody's going to click on it. So try to make it captivating. Make them want to click on it. Um, engage them. So here's a little example. Two different cakes. Which one do we want to eat? The one on the left, right? It's captivating. Can't stop looking at it. But what if those cakes taste the same? Think of that as your blog post. You've got to give your readers something to make them want to come to you. Be captivating. And again, when, you, um, when we write our blog post, we're going to start with the title. Watch your characters. Your little WordPress SEO will help you. Use your keywords in your title. But we want to use captivating titles. And there's four examples that this came from ProBlogger, and I think this is one of the best examples. I've modified it a little bit because I didn't want to like take it word for word. So these are the four examples they use, and I actually 100% believe these are right. Um, it's this is it. This is the ultimate guide to captivating titles. This is the essential reading that you will ever need. Forget everything else. This is it. Compelling, captivating. That's the kind of title you want. You want make people go, okay, forget these nine here. This is the one I want. Need an outcome. How to use Amazon. That's your need. What's the outcome? We're going to make a million dollars with it. Who, wow, who doesn't want to make a million dollars off Amazon? I want to read that. That's captivating. How interesting is that? Tell them why they cannot resist this article. Make them, when they scroll down, where they want to scroll back up because they're thinking about your title that, oh, maybe I need to read that one. That's, not my, that's like number four on my list of my favorite. My favorite is number four, the ultimate list. Five ways to improve your titles. Lists are the most viral type of post out there. And it's one of my most favorite. We're going to talk about lists in, as part of your content, and that's another reason why they're my most favorite. If you're not a good writer, I'm not a good writer. I know I'm not. I'm a technical writer. My writing sucks. But I tell people how to write. I can tell you all day long how to write. Uh, so that's why I like lists, because I'm not a great writer. Your permalink is mywebsite.com backslash how to make apple pies. That's your permalink. That can vary from your title. So that's why I say change them up. Use your keyword phrase that you want, how to make an apple pie the best apple pie. You know, take out your stop words. Use that as your keyword phrase, or use your keyword phrase as your permalink. Take your keyword phrase and make it sexy for your title. So the two work together in the search engine. Um, make sure it's not a tag or a category. I had a client one time who made an article, made a tag, it says how to make an apple pie. Her permalink was how to make an apple pie. It was in a weird loop. It took me a little while to figure it out. I'm like, oh, that's why. So because depending on how your site's set up, it may or may not have tag slash the title and they're clicking on something and you're not going to see your article. Uh, again, make sure you know your characters. WordPress SEO, I cannot say that enough. I love that one. Um, I'm a deal blogger, frugal living, so that's one of my many sites that I have. Um, this is just an example of what will happen in the search engines. You can't see, I don't know if you can see the little slashes up there. Normally I'm standing on the stage and I can actually point this out. But do you see how long that permalink is, that it's so long? that their keyword is at the back, those words are not being indexed. They're losing all that juice. I love it when my, competitive or my competitors do it, but it's not the way you should be doing it. All your keywords should be at the front. That's your prime real estate. So try to get those keywords right behind that backslash. Uh, 
uh, again, the king or content. Um, when you're writing, use your keyword phrase in the first paragraph. And in the remainder of the first few characters, about 100 or so, try to put as much of your keyword density without overloading it and disrupting the user experience in those first few paragraphs. That's for the SEO. But you need to make your reader happy too. So make sure it all blends together so your reader's happy and the search engines are happy. Content, write 300 words at least. Most plugins will tell you, you know, if you have enough content, it'll tell you your keyword density if you don't want to do word counts and calculate it out. Um, WordPress SEO will count that for you. Bottom left-hand corner of a word post or a WordPress post is your word count if you're ever in doubt. You can use those tools. Bold and italicize those keywords and keywords phrases. So if you're writing about apple pie, bold and italicize it. Now one of my little pet peeves, I didn't put it in here, but um, if you have a hyperlink, underline it if it's not in your style sheet or have your designer do it. People with um, visual, thank you, impairments, um, cannot see the difference in color. So use your underline sparingly. Only use an underline when there's a link. Some people like to make it as an emphasis. Don't do that because visually impaired people can get confused and there's more out there than you think. I have a friend that's colorblind. Um, she brought it to my attention when she was reading my website. She couldn't figure out where the link was. So I had my designer go in and just do a global change where everything was underlined. That was a link for her. Um, use your header two and your header three with your keyword phrases. And you're formatting your little kitchen sink up at the top under bold, italic, and underline. There's a little drop down box that normally says paragraph. Just highlight your text. Hit H2 or H3. Blend it in with your content where it doesn't. I normally do the H2 at the, in the middle somewhere, like before a list. And then I'll do my H3 at the end where it doesn't you, you know, disrupt my user experience. Keyword density of 3 to 5%. That should be your goal. Sometimes you just can't do it. Don't stress over it. Not every post is going to be perfect. And, and I have so many people that stress. I can't hit 5%. I can't hit 3%. Is it in there at least once? Great, move on. We can optimize it in other ways. Don't stress over it. Um, have you heard of WordPress SEO? Did I mention I love it? Yeah, it's in there. Your hook. Your content should contain a hook. Did you know that 90% of your readers will never read past that second paragraph? I just made that up. That's my hook. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. You might have great content. They don't read past mine because I, I suck as a writer. Uh, I'm a dill blogger. So ways to open your paragraph, that's a hook. Start a question, which I did. Toss it to a statistic. I did both. What is the need or a problem? Hey, Susie Q emailed me because her apple pie just <laughs> went blup. How to, what happened? I can't answer that. Go to your readers to solve a problem. So that's a way that you can write good content. Get them involved in the very beginning. Make a claim. Start with a quote. I don't like quotes. There's only a few that I like, but if you're into that, that's a great way to start. Pictures. Pictures are very important to your storytelling. Even if you're a technical writer, there are ways that you can use images and photographs in your writing. Okay, people get bored easy. They just do. Their minds start shutting down after so many words. Break it up with pictures or a graph or something. They have to make the mental block. Okay, um, mental move. It helps identify what the post is about. Your best photograph should be your featured image and it should be at the top of your article because again, they are identifying what it is about. It should fill the width of your posting area. So depending on how big your website is or the posting area, unless you're just using the full 
you know, 1,080 or whatever, don't go that big. But it, like mine, I think is set at 650 by 500 because I want big pictures. Um, always rename your photos or your images before uploading to your server. So instead of JPEG123, Apple Pie Recipe123, search engines cannot read pictures. Tell them what it is. That helps. Um, also, resize your pictures before uploading to your server. My husband, who's a new blogger, just crashed his site because he was uploading images that were like 4,000 by 4,000. And I didn't have enough space allocated for his website. And he just took it down. And he's like, what did I do? And that was it. Y there's no reason for images to be that large. Just resize them before you upload them. Just take a few minutes um, to get that cleaned up. Always upload your photos to your server. Flickr's great. Tumblr, all those photo websites are wonderful. But guess what? If something happens, like if that photos reported and it's pulled and you don't know it, you now have a big X or a broken image on your website. There's also something called Google search and other search engines use image search. So if I look up best apple pie recipe and I go to images, how many of you guys do that? How many of you will Google something and then click over to images to look at something? Okay, that's search engine optimization. Op when you optimize your pictures, that's going to go back to your website. Do you, do you want them going to Flickr? Take that traffic, make it go back to your website. Always own your own stuff. Don't let anybody else have it. I mean, it's, if you want to put it over there, that's fine, but upload it to your site too. Try to use a two to one, three to one ratio of paragraphs to images. It depends on what you're writing about. It may or may not work with that ratio, but Try to break it up with some images, graphs, photos, or something. Uh, again, it helps the reader enjoyment. Always use alt text to match your keywords. Who here does not know what I'm talking about? Okay. When you upload your photo to WordPress, there's going to be an area where you can add a description, a caption, and alt text. Search engines cannot read an image, so you have to tell them what it is. So where it says alternative text, you're just going to type in apple pie recipe. And then when somebody sees that on your website, when they hover over it with a the mouse, there's going to be a little box that pops up, and it's going to say apple pie recipe. Because now you've told those search engines what that is. Just a little extra piece of, just a smidge of extra juice there. Um, one thing that I like to do on my website, I go under settings and then media, and then I will actually for my large, I tell it that I want it 650 by 500. So that way when I, if I have a picture that might be 700 by 634, I just click on that and it makes all my pictures uniform. If I, because I'm lazy and I don't edit my images like I told you to. <laughs> don't do, I tell people, don't do what I do, just please do what I say, because I'm lazy. I'm lazy when it comes to my own stuff. Um, some photo traffic and tools that I like to use. Um, if Pinterest, who here uses Pinterest? Who here does not use Pinterest at all? Everyone should be on Pinterest. I don't care what your business is. If it's selling dog crap, you should be on Pinterest. <laughs> I'm serious. I can tell you how to sell dog crap on Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is huge. My prediction, two to three years from now, it will take over Facebook. I said it right here at WordCamp, OK? We got that recorded. Um, Pinterest is awesome, same for the image search, so a lot of people will go to Google Images and search and they just changed it where it's an extra click now for them to go to your site. So if you brand it with mywebsite.com, somebody's going to go, oh, hey, this is a great apple pie recipe, I wonder if she's got more. So if they don't click on it, they might remember your website. Or if somebody steals your picture, um, it will help with that. PicMonkey, it's free, it's simple to use, cheap to upgrade. I got, a, got the warning here, so let me just go through these. Internal linking. Use at least one internal link to another related article on your website. Use your keywords for the link. Do one for an external link for another website that's related. 
I love Zamanta, Zamanta, don't know how to pronounce it, that's how it's spelled. What that does, it's a plugin that does related posts. There's so many related posts out there. There's like in related, uh, yet another related post. I like this one because they pay me money because I'm all about money. When you do your links, don't do the top. Don't say click here because now you're telling the search engines your keywords are click here. Do it like this, how to make apple cider. That's your keywords. You want that hyperlink, internal or external link. Lists are great for an article. They break up the content. They're easily browsed, easy to remember. They're very powerful. Keep them symmetrical and begin them with the same part of the speech, if possible. So don't do like a bullet with three words and then a bullet with like three sentences. Try to keep them symmetrical. Calls to action. This is one that most bloggers do not do. You need a call to action in every post. Sign up for my newsletter. Sign up for my news feed. Buy this from me. Make me money. Go read my other article in Apple Pies. Email me. Read my morning feed. I already said feed. But give them a call to action. You want to keep them on your site. You want to keep them with you as long as possible. This is what most bloggers fail at. Categories and tags, that's just a little thing for SEO. Um, categories, don't do a lot of them. Try to keep those minimal. Tags, don't go crazy. I've seen people do like 100 tags. Oh my gosh, don't do that. Your category would be recipes, for example. Your tags, use your keywords. Fast apple pie recipe, fast apple pie recipe, apple pies. Just keep it simple, use a couple. Money, money, money. I'm in the blogging business for making money. Um, I, I have tested this, the results I have seen is people scan, they don't read everything. They're numb to ads, they're numb to those Amazon stores that you build and embed in your, wid like the widgets. They don't buy anything from you. The best way to do it, because you're building trust, with your reader is to put it in a link. Click here to view the apple peeler that I bought that works best for me. Don't do the big widget. Give them a link because now they're going to click on it. They can't resist clicking on it. They're going to click on it. And again, okay. Um, if you're running ads like Google, um, watch your content so it wraps well. That will help you make more in the contextual. Also know your FTC rules. I didn't hear that covered today, but if any of you are doing affiliate marketing, the rules just changed. They're really coming down on us bloggers. Um, social sharing, and I'm flying through this because I'm getting the warnings. Um, be sure, this is actually part of your site, not part of your content, but we are marketing your content. Um, you can flare it. You can get the pin buttons that float over your images. You can do the tweet buttons, the stumble buttons. Make sure all of those are somewhere on your part of your article. Okay, we want that article shared as much as possible. White space. White space is your friend. Don't make the blog article so cluttered. It's just, you're like, whoa, what is this? Give it some white space. Break it up a little bit. Make it more palatable to the eyes. Okay, people are very visual. These are the recaps of the key components. And I did WordPress SEO green because when you've done everything right, it'll turn, it will give you a little green dot, which means go. So, And just a little miscellaneous tidbits I really didn't have time for. If you're doing some repetitive writing, um, templates help you save time. I don't recommend doing like the same copy over and over because that's a whole nother presentation for SEO. But like if you have some things that you, a few sentences, like I write about Target, so I want people to sign up with this or sign up with that. I have those sentences in there with my affiliate so I always don't have to look it up. So that saves me some time. Um, keep it simple, unless you're a technical writer or medical writer or something, Journalism is taught you should write on a sixth grade level. How sad is that? That's bad. American Marketing Association, when I was a member, my time is up. Oh, Google authorship. Let me just see what the last one is. Okay. That, just read that. That's one of my little mantras that I love, and I, I think it holds true for blogging. Um, absolutely. All, everybody in this room is, is who you should be networking with. 
we have up to 10 minutes for questions and answers. And then we're going to take one minute after that for uh, announcements for tonight. But uh, let's open it up for Billy. Questions? Questions. Thank you. No questions? Okay, oh, right here. Because your slides were awesome. I will clean them up because I have um, the picture of the peacock's not mine. <laughs> so I need to pull that out. But I will later. I realized I was going to do a link and put it on the last slide. And I'm like, I need to change out some of those pictures because I don't own them. So Question. I will do that, though. Just put on Twitter. Yes, I'll, I'll tweet it out. Anybody else? Yes. Hold on. Go back to the summary. Just, can you go back to the summary of two slides? Yes. A lady in the orange or coral? Mic Microphone's coming. <laughs> you talked about um, photos and linking them to Flickr and putting your, can you do that with stock photos? Or do they have to be your photographs? I never if use I stock purchased. photos. I, well, oh, that's a road I don't want to, that's touchy. Um, I only use my own photographs. I only recommend that you use your own photographs. Rules are changing all the time with stock photography of what you can and cannot do. I don't keep up with those rules anymore. So I cannot answer that question. Like I used to use iStock and like build collages. I just don't use it anymore because I'm just so paranoid of being sued. Yes. Could you explain to us how you actually make money on your blogs? Huh. Okay. Um, I'm one of the redheaded stepchildren in the blogging world. I have a frugal living deal site. We are like, when you mention that, people go, ugh. That is my big. I, I know, I have, I'm actually, I have a different one. It's just different, yeah, it's all the same concept. So um, that type of website makes a lot of money because I'll find, like, I really know my audience well, and I know what they like, because I talk to them a lot on Facebook. So I will ask them, like, hey, guys, what deals are you looking for? Oh, I need diapers this week. So I have a VA that's always looking for the best diaper deals. I'll go write a blog post. They'll post it. They buy through Amazon. I make money. So that's how that one makes money. My other blog, I, make, I get paid for sponsored posts. One site, if you have computers, look up Desumama, D-E-S-U-M-A-M-A.com, D-E-S-U-M-A-M-A.com. She's one of my clients. She writes beautiful content. Brands love her. She has no numbers, like very few visitors. But her content is so beautiful. Brands knock down her door. She called me this past week, and she's like, um, I got a sponsored post from a brand. They're going to pay her several zeros to write some articles about their product. I do those same articles. I can get paid anywhere from three, five, six, seven hundred dollars for write one article on how to change out your light bulbs to save money. So there's opportunities like that. Most of the articles that I've found to do on how to change your light bulbs and stuff pay you like. $20, 20 dollars You're in the wrong network. I'll hook you up. <laughs> it's all about being in the right networks, the affiliate networks. Billy, where does content curation fit into your formula? It hasn't yet. Will um, it? Remember that website I was telling you about? That's, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm one that, I love original content because I'm all about finding your voice and sharing your voice with your reader. But I will be curating a website um, for my son. My son's a gamer. He runs a gaming website, and I had an idea that curation will be perfect for him. Great. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one. Who's ready to go happy hour tonight? Yes? <laughs> so... All right, well, I hope you guys learned something. Um, my Twitter, the personality I'm using today is at Billy Hillier on Twitter. I have about 10 different accounts, and depending on which day it is, is the personality I use. So you can at Billy Hillier me. I'll send out the slides once I get them cleaned up so I don't get sued. <laughs>
Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Billy Hillier.